the Battle Frontier. It will test your skills and your patience like nothing else. I previously defeated every facility in Pokemon Emerald's Battle Frontier, but my channel was smaller then, and those videos barely got any views. So, I had the idea to mash them all together into one mega video, to hopefully give everyone a chance to experience it all from start to finish. But enough rambling, I now present to you my complete journey through Pokemon Emerald's Battle Frontier. Enjoy! I already went through the main story of Pokemon Emerald on the channel, which I highly recommend you check out if you haven't already. But I figured I would try to do the post game and go through all of the Battle of Frontier facilities. I don't think I've ever tried to get all of the Frontier symbols before. Since when I was a kid, I didn't really know about EVs or IVs and that you kind of need competitive Pokemon to win these battles. So I could never progress very far. But for this video, we'll be climbing the Battle Tower. And you need a win streak of 70 to face off against Annabelle and win the Golden Ability symbol. Which is quite the challenge. We we'll also need to defeat her at the halfway point for the silver symbol. So let's get going. I'm not going to bore you with many of these battles, especially the early ones, as Esper can tear through most of them with Psychic. But after defeating quite a few trainers, we finally get to face off against Annabelle for the first time. First up, she sends out Alakazam. We try to hit it hard with Psychic, but miss. Then go in for a bite attack, which does major damage. We take a Thunder Punch, but then finish it off with another bite. After that, she sends out a tanky Snorlax. This one may be a little trickier, but after Alakazam's disable wears off, we can finally hit it with a Psychic, which doesn't do as much as I would have hoped. Then we're nearly taken out by a Body Slam and get paralyzed. But Esper's synchronized ability copies that paralysis onto Snorlax, which should give us the upper hand. Unfortunately, Esper gets taken out by a Shadow Ball, but next up is Carpo. We use Dragon Dance to boost our attack and speed, while Snorlax hits us with a Body Slam. Then Snorlax succumbs to the paralysis, allowing us to get off an Earthquake, which almost gets us to win. But luckily, Snorlax just tries to yawn, and we can finish it off with Return. Last, but certainly not least, is the legendary Pokemon Entei. I'm sure this will be a battle for the ages, causing us to push ourselves to the limit and unleash every strategy we have at our disposal. And... It goes down in one hit to surf. Um, okay, and with that we've defeated Annabelle and earned ourselves the silver ability symbol. But things are far from over, as we still have many tough battles ahead of us. In the first half, Esper was carrying us and could one-shot most opponents. But in the back half, he tends to struggle in a lot of the battles, and can sometimes two-shot the opponent, but also faints a lot more, causing us to rely on the rest of our team. These battles require good tight matchups and strategy, especially when some of these random trainers may throw out a legendary or two. I'm not ashamed to admit that we did lose several times to some of these battles, requiring us to try again from the beginning. But I'm not going to force you to sift through every single battle. Instead, let's get to the one you've all been waiting for. Our final battle against Annabelle, which may be one of the toughest Pokemon battles I've ever faced. All my Pokemon have good IVs and have a decent EV spread, but they still could barely hang on against her Pokemon. First, she sends out Raikou, and I lead for Esper. We try to hit it with Bite, which barely does any damage. But luckily, she goes for Calm Mind, which gives us a chance to swap into Nido. We correctly predicted its Thunderbolt and take no damage, since Nidokin is part ground type. We then go for Earthquake, which is super effective, and take it out no problem. She then sends out Latios, because of course she does. We then attempt to use Earthquake, forgetting that it has Levitate, which allows Latios to finish off Nido with a Psychic Attack. Our best choice for this fight is now Esper, since he'll resist Latios' Psychic, and his Bite attack should be super effective. It's then a battle of wills, as Bite keeps almost taking it out, but then it uses Recover to undo our progress. But eventually, we get the victory after a bunch of back and forth, and some lucky flinches. But last, she sends out the scariest Pokemon at her disposal, the brick wall that is Snorlax. We attempt to use Double Team, hoping to get lucky, but Snorlax lands a Shadow Ball to finish off Esper. Last, but certainly not least, is Vicky. Snorlax isn't weak to any of our attacks and can't be poisoned. But first, we set up our Sunny Day, which not only allows us to use Solar Beam without charging, but in Gen 3, Vicky has the ability Chlorophyll, which raises our speed in Sunshine. 
Now we can unleash multiple solar beams in a row until Snorlax falls. Luckily for us, it kept setting up Curse, raising its attack and defense several times. Which was pretty scary. But after three solar beams, it finally goes down. I know if it would have decided to attack that last turn instead of using Curse, we probably would have lost. But once again, Vicky is the MVP. And all our hard work to reach this point has paid off. And with that, Annabelle gives us the gold ability symbol. And we have finally conquered the Battle Tower. And this time, we're continuing our journey to fully beat the Battle Frontier in Pokemon Emerald. Last time, we successfully climbed the Battle Tower and received a gold ability symbol. But for this video, we're taking on the Battle Factory. And while the required win streak isn't as high, it still poses its own unique challenge. You see, in the Battle Factory, we're forced to use rental teams instead of our own Pokemon. Before each set of 7 matches, we can pick 3 random Pokemon to rent. And in between each battle, we get to exchange one of them for a Pokemon that was just used by our opponent. We're also given a small hint before each battle about our next opponent's battle style and the type of Pokemon they may be using. Sometimes this helped, but most of the time it was useless information. But with good strategies and some smart Pokemon choices, I think we can do this. So let's get going. The leader of this facility is Nolan. Just like the Battle Tower, we must battle him at the halfway point to earn the Silver Knowledge Symbol, before having to once again defeat him in a final battle to win us the Gold Symbol. I'm not going to bore you with all the in-between battles, but we'll showcase some of them here. I didn't have too much trouble progressing, if I didn't have any good counters to my opponent's team. I highly recommend picking Pokemon with good type coverage. Several ones I picked up along the way possessed moves of different types and that came in very handy. But after a 20 win streak, we finally get to face off against Nolan for the first time. I think our team is pretty decent, so let's see if we can do this. He opens up with Hariyama, and we send out Wishcash. We use Surf, but it doesn't do much damage. Then he takes us down to 50% health with Cross Chop. In a last ditch effort, we attempt to use Fisher, but it misses, allowing him to take out Wishcash with another Cross Chop. Next up is Starmie, and luckily for us, it knows Psychic. So Hariyama goes down easy. After that he sends out Neoqueen and we use Ice Beam to almost take it out. It then retaliates with Thunderbolt, which was scary, but we survive and hit it with one more Ice Beam to get us to win. Lastly, Nolan sends out Houndoom. Luckily, we outspeed to hit it with Surf, and since it's weak to water, that's enough to take Houndoom out and secure us our first victory against Nolan. He then awards us the Silver Knowledge Symbol. We're only halfway there. The battles to follow are tough. Especially if we pick the incorrect Pokemon to bring to us. Just like the Battle Tower, some of these trainers can have legendary Pokemon. However, we didn't have the chance to add them to our team, so that may actually be a good thing. Some of these battles I was able to win by using one-hit KO moves. They are extremely inaccurate, so was a gamble. But sometimes that gamble paid off and saved me from losing. But after achieving a win streak of 41, we are finally given the privilege of battling Nolan one final time. He opens with Metagross and I started with Blastoise. Unfortunately, it knew Thunder Punch, which was bad news for us. I attempted to set up Rain Dance to boost our water type moves. Luckily it paid off as we barely survived his next Thunder Punch, but landed a critical hit Hydro Pump to one hit KO Metagross. Next, he sends out Raichu which knocks out Blastoise with a Thunderbolt. We then send out our Metagross and one hit KO him with a super effective Earthquake. Last up is Tentacruel. He uses Surf, boosted by our own Rain Dance, to do a lot of damage. We go for an Earthquake, which hits pretty hard. However, since we're slower, he's able to finish us off with another Surf. Our last Pokemon is Latias, so I think we've got this one in the bag. But he ends up outspeeding and hits us with a Confuse Ray, which worries me for a second. However, we overcome the confusion to unleash a Thunderbolt, winning us the match and the Gold Knowledge Symbol. And there you have it everybody, the Battle Factory has been beaten. This was a really fun challenge, and being restricted to rental Pokemon really forced me to strategize before each match. I can't wait to take on the rest of the Battle Frontier to see what other interesting challenges are waiting for me. Last time, we were victorious in the Battle Factory and received the Gold Knowledge Symbol. Well, for this video, we're continuing our journey by taking on the Battle Dome. 
In this challenge, we're forced to complete a series of tournaments to eventually face Dome Ace Tucker at the halfway point for the silver tactic symbol, then again at the end for the gold tactic symbol. We're allowed to bring three Pokemon, but can only choose two for each battle. And we're allowed to see what three Pokemon our opponents have access to before the match begins. This allows us to devise a decent strategy prior to going into battle. Each bracket consists of 16 trainers, and we are required to come out victorious in several brackets before we're allowed to face Tucker for the first time. Luckily, since each trainer can only use two Pokemon in each battle, things progress pretty quickly, especially in the earlier battles. But I won't bore you with every single battle, so let's jump right into our first match with Dome Ace Tucker. He opens with Swampert, and we send out Vicky. Luckily, we got a perfect type matchup, and Oko with a powerful Giga Drain. His second and last Pokemon is Salamance, who hits us with Intimidate, but that shouldn't matter since Vicky is a special attacker. We're able to set up a Sunny Day, but get hit hard by Salamance's Aerial Ace. Solar Beam barely does any damage, and Vicky is finished off by a Brick Break. It's Esper's turn, and we retaliate with a powerful Psychic. Unfortunately, it isn't enough to secure us to victory, and Salamance almost takes us out with an Earthquake. But luckily, we're faster, so Esper uses one more Psychic to finish off Salamance, defeating Tucker and earning us the Silver Tactic Symbol. Man, that was a little too close for comfort, but we're now halfway to our final goal, so let's continue progressing through the various brackets, which are starting to get a lot harder the farther we go. And during this part, I was forced to start over a few times, since some of these opponents are tough. But eventually, we're able to make our way to Tucker for one final showdown. Let's skip forward to see how that battle turns out. This one took a few tries, but we finally had one attempt where all the stars aligned. Once again, we get lucky and it's Swampert vs Vicky as our first matchup. Vicky Oko's Swampert with Giga Drain easily. But then comes the tricky part. Tucker sends out the powerful Metagross, and we try to go for a Giga Drain, but it isn't very effective, and we get one shot by Metagross's Psychic. So it all comes down to Nidoking. We go for Earthquake, since it's the hardest hitting move against Metagross. And in an amazing stroke of luck, we get a critical hit, which is enough to take out Metagross and win us the match, finally earning us the gold tactic symbol. That was a really close one. In some of my failed attempts, a non-crit Earthquake wasn't enough to defeat Metagross, so that crit made all the difference. But there you have it everybody, the Battle Dome has been beaten. This one was pretty fun, although it seemed quite a bit harder than the first two. But with this victory, that's three battle facilities cleared and four more to go. As we continue our way through Pokemon Emerald's Battle Frontier, it's now time to take on the Battle Pike. The facility is hard to miss since it's in the shape of a giant survivor, but to fully clear the pike, we'll need to battle and defeat Pike Queen Lucy. Don't let her beauty fool you, as she can be quite deadly. We'll need to face her twice to win the gold luck symbol. And as the name implies, luck has a huge part in the gimmick of this facility. We'll need to complete a total of 10 rounds, and each round forces you to progress through 7 rooms. But it isn't that simple as before each room, you're faced with three choices. If luck is on your side, you may barely have to battle anyone, but if you choose poorly, then you're in for some difficult battles, especially in the later rounds. Additionally, after most battles, you won't be healed, unless you choose your rooms wisely. I found the Battle Pike to be one of the easier challenges in the Battle Frontier, but with poor luck, then it could be one of the hardest. As we fight our way to Lucy, Let's go over some of the details of this facility. Each room has a chance to contain one of eight different challenges. Single battle, where a trainer with three Pokemon challenges you. Double battle, where you face two trainers with one Pokemon each. Hard single battle with healing, where you face a more difficult trainer but are fully healed afterwards. Wild Pokemon, you enter a winding corridor filled with random encounters. Most of the Pokemon here are pretty strong but you can usually just run from the battles. No event. An NPC stands in a room, but does nothing. Stats condition. You get attacked by a gentleman's Curlia or Dusclops, 
and they will inflict the status condition on one of your non-fainted Pokemon. The statuses which can be inflicted are Severely Poison, Freeze, Paralysis, Sleep, or Burn, as shown in this chart. And lastly, the rooms you really hope for are the ones that either heal one or two of your Pokemon, or the room that fully heals all of your Pokemon. Prior to picking a room, you'll also find a receptionist who will provide a small hint regarding what one of the rooms may contain. I suggest taking advantage of this, since it can help narrow down your choice. Here's a chart of what she may say, and the outcomes which could result from choosing the room she suggests. It makes most decisions a 50-50 chance, since there can be one of two outcomes, with one being good and the other typically being bad. In my experience, Result 1 has the highest chance of occurring. Oh, and before facing Lucy, you will get two of your Pokemon healed. Thank Arceus for that, otherwise it would be insanely difficult. But if you reach the last room in pretty bad shape, you may still be at a disadvantage. But with all that out of the way, let's hop into our first battle with Pike Queen Lucy. She starts off with the Wiper, and we open with Nito. Luckily Earthquake hits hard and takes it out in one hit. Next up is Milotic, and this time we have a type disadvantage, but Nito knows Thunder so we go for it. However, it does far less damage than I would have liked, and Milotic retaliates with a super effective Surf, one-shotting Nito. Unfortunately, Esper wasn't healed before the battle began, so our only choice is Carpo. We use Dragon Dance in an attempt to boost our stats, and then hit it with Return since our other moves aren't that effective. We do decent damage, but Milotic uses the Ice Beam, and we end up getting frozen. Talk about a stroke of bad luck. But all hope isn't lost, since unlike earlier generations, we now should saw out eventually. Luckily, we do defrost, but it's too little too late, as Milotic's leftovers have almost fully healed it, so return isn't enough to take it out in one hit. We survive an Ice Beam, and are able to finally finish it off with another return. Lastly, she sends out Shuckle. It then poisons us and stalls with Protect. A combination of that strategy and Shuckle's high defense prevents us from winning this battle and Carpo is taken out by the poison. With a little luck and a better strategy, I know we can claim victory. Once again, she leaves with Swiper, and we start off with Nito. Things play out pretty much the same, however this time we respond to her Milotic by switching to Carpo, since I know Nito isn't up to the challenge. We open with Dragon Dance and then hit it with Return. This time we avoid getting frozen and are able to finish off Milotic with another return. And last is her Shuckle. We're in a better position this time around, as I successfully predict its Protect and use Dragon Dance to power up further. We get poisoned again, but after a couple Earthquakes, Shuckle goes down and we've successfully defeated Pike Queen Lucy, earning ourselves the Silver Luck Symbol. But this challenge is only half over. The road to battling Lucy again is long and difficult. We have to pass through the pike many times before we are able to reach her again. And the battles in this section are no joke. Some of them even use legendaries. Having luck on our side is crucial, since if you can pass through most rooms without engaging in battle, then you'll find the whole thing a lot easier. Let's just say I lost quite a bit, and even when I finally reached Lucy, it took a couple tries. This time, her team is well trained, and she isn't messing around. Viper's up first, but this time Esper is at full health, and easily Oko's with Psychic. Next, she sends out Steelix, and we attempt a power up with Calm Mind, but unfortunately, it takes us out in one hit with Earthquake. It's Neil's turn, but it's still burned from earlier in the challenge, which puts us at a disadvantage. Not only does it take extra damage each turn, but being burned also lowers physical attack. We go for Earthquake, but it barely does any damage. However, its Earthquake hits hard, taking us down in one hit. Last up is Carpo, and we're able to finish off Steelix with a couple Surfs. However, we're outmatched by her Gyarados, who appears to have a similar moveset to us. It uses Dragon Dance to power way up, making its return hit like a truck, securing Lucy's victory and our defeat. We came close, and I know with a little bit of extra luck, this is possible. So time for a rematch. It starts the same with Esper KOing Swiper with a single Psychic. Then she sends out her Steelix, 
and this time we predict his earthquake and swap to Gyarados, since it's immune. We then hit it with two Surfs, taking it down. Last up is Gyarados vs Gyarados for the rematch we've all been waiting for. We try to use a single Dragon Dance and then go for return, but it still isn't enough. Her return is just more powerful and we go down in two hits. But this time we have Nido to wrap things up. Luckily for us it knows Thunder, and even more luckily for us, Thunder actually hits. Since Gyarados is 4 times weak to electric, it goes down easy. Securing our victory against Pike Queen Lucy and earning us the Golden Luck Symbol. The Battle Pike was a fun challenge. I enjoyed progressing through the various rooms, and the fact that Luck played a huge role in our victory made this symbol really earn its name. Last time we conquered the Battle Pike, bringing us one step closer to dominating the Battle Frontier. But we still have a few more facilities to deal with. This time we're going to attempt the Battle Arena. Arena Tycoon Greta is the one we must defeat for this challenge. After 28 straight victories, we'll get to battle her for the Silver Guts symbol, and 56 wins will allow us to earn the Golden symbol. The rules for this facility are as follows. Each match pits two Pokemon against each other for a total of three turns. If you knock out your opponent's Pokemon, then victory is guaranteed. However, after three turns, if both Pokemon are still standing, then the one with the higher score wins, and the other is forced to faint instantly. Your score is based on three criteria. Mind, Skill, and Body. Mind judges on offensive skills. Skill judges on accuracy. And Body judges the HP remain at the end of the third turn. I won't go over all the details, but as you can see from these early battles, it's easy to come out on top. But things are sure to get much harder once we reach the later battles. We'll follow that out of the way. Let's jump into our first battle with Greta. She opens with Heracross, and we send out Esper. We couldn't have asked for a better type matchup, so we finish it off with a single Psychic. Next up is Umbreon, and this one might be a little more difficult. Esper doesn't have any moves that deal enough damage, so we try for a double team strategy. However, luck isn't on our side and we go down pretty fast to a few faint attacks. It's Vicky's turn, and unfortunately we get confused and none of our attacks deal a ton of damage. And it knows Psychic, which is strong against us, so we go down without making much of an impact. Lastly, we send out Psyblade, and are able to stall long enough for the judge to determine us the winner, with a score of 6-0, which forces Umbreon to faint. It's now 1v1, but her last Pokemon is Shed Ninja. And as some of you may be aware, Shed Ninja has the ability Wonder Guard, which only lets it take damage from super effective attacks. So with Psyblade unable to do any damage, we go down pretty quickly, giving Greta the victory. If only we had something to deal with Wonder Guard, we could have won. Let's try this again. After fighting our way back up to Greta, we're ready to take her on with a new strategy. Once again, she sends out her hair across and we send out Esper, which ends just as you'd expect. Next up is Umbreon, and Esper goes down easy, so we send out Psyblade to stall just like before. But once again, Umbreon is taken out through us earning more points. Last up is her Shed Ninja, but this time we have a secret weapon. After a few turns, Psyblade gets taken out. And our 8th in the hole this time around is Charizard, who happens to have an attack that is super effective. So all it takes is a single flamethrower to knock out Sheninja, winning the match and earning us the Silver Gut symbol. I could have went much worse, but after swapping around our team it turned out fine in the end. Now this is where things get difficult. The second half of these battle facilities always crank up the difficulty, and this time is no different. The trainers have stronger Pokemon, and some of them come prepared with strategies that stall for time, which makes losing through a lack of points a more common occurrence. But after many difficult battles and some frustrating losses, we reach Greta for one final battle. This time she opens with Umbreon, and we start with Esper. She has the advantage, since none of our Pokemon are a good counter for hers. But since winning through brute force is likely out of the question, we stall for time using Double Team. And once the three turns pass, and the final points are given, Esper comes out on top which forces Embryon to faint. Next up is Gengar, and luckily we don't hit ourselves in confusion and are able to land a powerful Psychic, taking it out in one hit. Her last Pokemon is Breloom. We go for Psychic but unfortunately hit ourselves in confusion, and then get put to sleep before we can do any damage. We eventually wake up, but hit ourselves again, allowing Breloom to finish us off with a few headbutts. That was unfortunate, but we're not done yet. 
Next, we send out Carpo. We then power up with our Dragon Dance, which should give us the upper hand. We then easily take out Breloom with a couple returns. Reaching off Greta's last Pokemon, winning us the match and the Gold Guts symbol. That fight felt pretty easy, and I'm surprised it only took one try. But with that victory, we've completed five of the seven battle facilities, leaving only the Battle Palace and Pyramid. Last time we made it through the Battle Arena, bringing us one step closer to completing the Battle Frontier. But we still have a couple more facilities to master, so this time we're going to attempt the Battle Palace. And Palace Maven Spencer is the one staying in our way this time. It's going to take 21 wins to earn the silver symbol, and 42 will get us the gold symbol. Here's a quick rundown of the rules. Basically, in the Battle Palace, Pokemon battle on their own without any commands from their trainers. And the way they battle depends on the Pokemon's nature. But when their HP falls below a certain point, their fighting style changes a little. All attacks fall into one of three categories, attack, defense, and support. Each nature is more or less likely to use moves within these categories. And when the Pokemon's HP falls below 50%, these odds get adjusted. For example, a Pokemon with an adamant nature has a 38% chance to use an attacking move. But if its HP falls below 50%, that chance gets bumped up to 70%. When this is triggered, a message is displayed on the screen to let the player know this is now in effect. Additionally, if the Pokemon has no moves in the desired category, then the move is chosen at random. Now that that's out of the way, I would just say this method of battling can be frustrating at times. Especially if one more attack will win the battle, but your Pokemon refuses to use an attacking move. But as you can see, once again, their early battles aren't too bad. And we're blowing past most of them with minimal issues. But let's see how our first battle against Spencer went. He leads with Crobat, and we open with Nido. Nido gets confused, but luckily we don't hit ourselves and get off a of Thunder, which does decent damage. One more Thunder would do it. But unfortunately, Crobat starts hitting us with Fly, and we are unable to land another successful Thunder. And the confusion also causes us problems. It would go down after a few turns. Next up is Esper, and Crobat uses a double team, which could make things tricky. It then decides to confuse us, and Psychic would probably finish it off, but Esper decides to use Shadow Ball instead. Spencer then switches to Slacking, but Esper finally decides to use Psychic and takes it out in one critical hit. Crobat's back, and Esper is still confused. However, it is able to use Double Team, which once again is in Psychic, so Esper gets poisoned by Crobat's Toxic. Esper then decides to spam Double Team and Calm Mind rather than finishing the fight, which allows the poison to weaken us until we finally go down. That was unfortunate, but last up we still have Carpo, who uses Surf, but Crobat barely hands on, allowing it to lower us down to half health before we're finally able to hit it with one more Surf, finishing the job. Last up, Spencer sends out Lapras, who hits us with Ice Beam while we mostly spam Dragon Dance. This causes us to lose pretty fast, and our first attempt ends in defeat. If only our Pokemon would have made some better choices, this could have ended much differently. Unfortunately, none of my Pokemon's natures are super optimal for this challenge, and since I don't want to train another team, we're going to need a little extra luck to win this. After several more failures, we head this attempt. Once again, it's Crobat vs Nido, and it uses Double Team. Then Nido decides to try Earthquake, which of course wouldn't work. It then flies up as we go for Thunder, but it misses. Fly hits, but we also hit Thunder, bringing it down to half health. Neo then gets confused and hurts itself, while Crobat uses Fly again. But this time we use Thunder and it hits. Then Thunder is able to hit Pokemon Water in the air, and Crobat finally goes down. Next is Slacking, and we snap out of confusion and hit it with Earthquake for decent damage, but also use the Earthquake, taking us out. We send out Carpo, which lowers Slacking's attack and then hit it with Earthquake, which is far weaker when used by Carpo. But after slacking Los around for a turn, we're able to finish it off with Surf. Last up is Lapras, which goes for Protect. We then hit it for minor damage with Surf and get frozen by Ice Beam. After a few turns of Lapras spamming Protect and confusing us, we then thaw out and try to attack some more, but hurt ourselves and get frozen again. So Lapras finally puts us out of our misery with a couple Ice Beams. We send out Esper, we use a Psychic, but then we get confused. And after several turns of Lapras using Protect, and Esper hurting itself while refusing to use a decent attack, it's finally able to get off one last Psychic, delivering the final blow and winning us the match. That was stressful, but at least we finally have the Silver Symbol and can continue through the remaining battles. Which I'm sure are going to be just as annoying. 
The fact that the Pokemon never seem to use the correct attack when they need to makes things much harder. Luckily, it's balanced around that fact, and your opponent sometimes also makes the wrong decision. I could have gone out and trained Pokemon with natures that line up more easily with the battle style, but I wanted to use the Pokemon I've been battling with for the entire Battle Frontier. But before we continue on to the last battle, if you are still watching, why don't you consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Subscribing is free and it shows me that you're enjoying my content. Now on to the final battle. Spencer opens a Farcanine and we send out Nito. He uses Protect and it hits us with extreme speed, but we're able to get in one earthquake before it protects again. However, we're then able to finish it off with a Body Slam. Next up is Slacking. It uses Yawn and we're able to hit it with an earthquake. We fall asleep, but it keeps spamming Yawn, and since it can only attack every other turn, we eventually wake up and are able to finish it off with a couple more Earthquakes. Last is Suicune, which had me worried, especially since we got put to sleep by slacking in the previous turn. Since we're unable to attack, Suicune can finish us off with Surf. We send out Carpo, and it tries to go for Earthquake, but it doesn't do that much damage. We weaken it with Return, but its Blizzard eventually takes us out. Lastly, we have Pyro, which isn't the best matchup. But luckily, we're faster, allowing us to move first, hitting Suicune with Fly and winning us the battle. That could have gone much worse, and I'm surprised it only took one attempt. I think some of the early battles were actually harder. But with that victory, we have claimed the Golden Spirit symbol, and have defeated 6 out of the 7 facilities in the Battle Frontier. Only the Battle Pyramid remains, and it should be an interesting one. I never thought I'd ever be this close to beating all the facilities, but the end is almost here, and I'm excited to see how it all plays out. Last time, we made it through the Battle Palace, bringing us even closer to completing the Battle Frontier. But we still have one more challenge left to conquer. This time, we're going to climb the Battle Pyramid and attempt to defeat Pyramid King Brandon. So, were we able to make our way to the top of the Battle Pyramid and finally achieve our goal of completing the Battle Frontier? Well, here's how it all played out. But first, a quick rundown of the rules. The Battle Pyramid is comprised of seven floors, and to advance from one floor to the next, the player must find the blue teleport pad. However, each floor is shrouded in total darkness and filled with trainers and wild Pokemon. The amount you can see goes up after each battle, but if you're lucky, you may find your way out with minimal confrontations. You also can find various items lying around, which may help you heal your Pokemon if they get worn out. You may even pick up some useful held items to give your Pokemon an advantage in battle. Basically, after going through the pyramid three times, you'll fight Brandon for the Silver Brave symbol. And after a total of ten times, you'll battle him for the Golden symbol. As usual, the early rounds are pretty easy. But with all that out of the way, let's jump into our first battle against Brandon. He sends out Regirock, and we lead with Esper. We bring it down to half health with Psychic, while it almost takes us out with Earthquake. But a second Psychic finishes it off. Next up is Registeel. We try for Psychic, but it doesn't do quite enough damage, and Esper is eventually taken out by another Earthquake. We send out Pyro, who has a type advantage, and we're almost able to defeat Registeel with a single Flamethrower, but it survives and goes for Metal Claw, which barely does any damage, allowing us to take it down with one final Flamethrower. Lastly, he sends out Regice, but we go for Flamethrower, which does massive damage, defeating it in a single hit and earning us the Silver Brave symbol. Wow, that was way easier than I expected it would be. I think getting to the battle was harder than the battle itself. We have a long trek ahead of us, since we have to climb the pyramid a total of 7 more times before battling Brandon again. This part of the challenge was extremely difficult, since it's easy to get lost in the dark, which increases our chances of getting knocked out by a trainer or even a random encounter. Let's just say this took me a while and had me wanting to pull my hair out. But after many, many trips through the battle pyramid, we finally reached our goal. This time Brandon leads with Articuno, and we once again send out Esper. We open with Calm Mind to power ourselves up a little, while Articuno goes for Blizzard. We then hit it with Psychic for massive damage, while it tries to use Reflect. But then another Psychic finishes it off. Zapdos is next, and we go for another Psychic. It uses Detect, but on the following turn, we try for Psychic, and it connects. Almost taking it out in one hit. It keeps spamming the detect, but eventually another Psychic is able to hit, finishing it off. 
As you've probably guessed by now, his last Pokemon is Moltres. We outspeed and hit it hard with Psychic, but it barely hangs on allowing it to get off a Hyper Beam, reducing Esper's HP to zero. It's Pyro's turn, and it's over pretty quickly, since we outspeed and are able to defeat Moltres with one slash attack. Bring it down and winning us the match against Brandon. The golden brave symbol is now ours. And with that, not only have we defeated the Battle Pyramid, but we've also cleared the entire Battle Frontier in Pokemon Emerald. We've earned all seven gold symbols, making this challenge 100% finished. Completing the Battle Frontier is something I've always wanted to do. When I was younger, I could never make it happen, since a lot of these facilities are quite difficult. But we've done it. And that wraps up my complete journey through the Battle Frontier. It was a fun and challenging adventure, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you. I put a lot of effort into these videos, and the fact that you stayed until the end means the world to me. But make sure you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Across the whole region, I journeyed far and wide. With Pokemon by my side, our spirits would in high. To the battle frontier, my heart set on the quest. Through trials and triumphs, I give it my best. Oh, I am the champion of the frontier. With courage and strength, we persevere. Gold symbols earn my glory clear. In the battle frontier, there's nothing to fear.